Are you a middle school math teacher struggling to get your students to understand how to subtract integers? You might have a ton of students with huge range and variety of learning and understanding, and you might be in a point of your school year where they should know how to add and subtract integers, but they don't. And well, it's kind of a struggle because they need to know how to do this concept because it's truly one of like the foundational building blocks of everything else. They need to have a full grasp of understanding of how to add and subtract integers before we really move on to anything else. Yes, you can use calculators, but we need to have a full conceptual understanding of what this means. If you missed the last video on how to teach adding integers, I have linked um, the, the, uh, link below in the description box. So go ahead and just click the link below and it'll take you back to the adding integers video because you really want your students to understand how to add integers before we talk about subtracting integers. They really have to have a super strong understanding of how to add integers before we dive into subtraction. And in this video, you're going to understand why. So let's hop to it on how to teach subtracting integers. Okay, so when I teach subtracting integers, I always tell my students, they, we are never subtracting, ever. And they look, the look of shock on their face, the look of confusion on their face always happens every year. They're usually like, what? Like, what do you mean we're never subtracting? Yes, we are never <clears throat> subtracting. And here's why. I always teach my students when we are subtracting integers, I teach them three letters. The letters are K-A-O, okay? And that means keep, add, opposite. So we are always just adding the opposite. So this is why your students have to have a really good understanding of adding integers before we even talk about subtraction. Okay, so here's my original problem. Seven minus negative three. And what does this mean? We're going to keep the 7, we're going to change the subtraction to an add, and then we're going to take the negative 3 and make it the opposite of negative 3, which is positive 3. So now you have an addition problem. It's really 7 plus 3, which is 10, right? Okay, the next one, negative 5 minus 3. We're going to keep the negative 5, we're going to take the subtraction and keep, make it positive, and then we're going to take the opposite of 3, which is negative 3, and now you have a negative 5 plus negative 3. And what did we say in our last video? If they are the same sign, we're going to add and keep the sign. So we're going to add these two numbers together, 5 plus 3, and we're going to keep the negative sign. So your answer is going to be negative 8. Okay? Next I have, whoops, next I have negative 9 minus 8. So I have, I'm going to keep my negative 9. I'm going to change my... Uh, subtraction to a, sorry, I'm going to make this red. I'm going to change my subtract to an add, and then I'm going to take the 8 and make it positive, or make it opposite, which is negative 8. And now my answer, again, it's same sign, so we're going to add and keep. 9 plus 8 is 17, and we're going to keep the negative sign. So your final answer is negative 17. Next, we have negative 17 minus negative 5. So I have negative 17, and I'm going to change my subtract to an add, and I'm going to take the opposite of negative 5, which is positive 5. Now I have different signs. So what do I do here? We're going to subtract and then take the sign of the bigger absolute value. So 17 minus 5 is 12, and the sign of the bigger absolute value is, is 17, which is negative. So my answer is negative. Okay, and then finally, I have 21 minus negative 11. So again, I have 21, we're going to change the subtract to an add, and the opposite of negative 11 is positive 11. So now we have a simple addition problem, 21 plus 11, which is going to be 32. When we have done a lot of these examples, I will go back to my reference sheet and again, just reiterate K-A-O, keep add opposite. And we... In these two examples, it's exactly what I've shown you in my slides already. If I have negative five minus one, I'm gonna keep the negative five, change the subtract to an add, and then make the one opposite, which is negative one. And then here, it would, it's gonna be negative six. Nine minus negative two, keep the nine, 
take the subtract and to make it an addition, and then take the opposite of negative 2 and make it positive 2. 9 plus 2 is 11. And there you have it. Teaching your students how to subtract negative numbers is so easy as long as they know the three letters keep add opposite. But it is imperative that they understand how to add integers because those integer rules directly apply when we are teaching subtracting integers. Again, if you missed the adding in integers, I've linked, them, linked that video below in the description box, so be sure to check that out. And then next week, I'm gonna be sharing with you my favorite activities to use when we are teaching adding subtracting integers so that your life is way easier. And who doesn't love that? I put together all my resources for you. I'm gonna show you exactly what I use in my classroom to make this teaching concept super easy save you a ton of time. If you have been struggling with students who've been confused with this, well, let's say goodbye to that because your students are gonna finally understand how to add and subtract integers. See you next time. Bye for now.